Movie theater chain AMC reaching a new debt restructuring deal. The agreement will extend the maturity of potentially two and a half billion dollars worth of AMC's debt and reduce its overall uh, debt load by more than four hundred and sixty million dollars. Join us now, AMC uh, CEO Adam Aaron. Uh, and I, I know you're out of the country. You're in you're in Turkey, uh, Adam, and, and we haven't seen you. I don't think uh, in a while you haven't been on CNBC or Squawk Box in over a year. I don't think this this was uh, something you really wanted to talk about uh, today. Well, I saved this uh, moment for the biggest news that AMC has made in years. Uh, the I just can't even tell you how important it is that we extended our debt maturities from 2026 to 2029. It gives us years and years of breathing room. And it's coming at a time when the box office finally, after four tough, turbulent years, the box office is finally roaring back strong. Uh, it started uh, in early June with Inside Out 2. Despicable Me 4 was a big hit. Twister is open big this weekend. Deadpool and Wolverine, which opens this week, might be the highest grossing R-rated his, uh, film in history. And as we look ahead, we've got so many big movies coming this fall and in 25 and in 2026. So the fact that our first lien lenders and our second lien lenders have agreed to give us another four and a half years or more uh, to pay back our debt or to refinance it further down the road, this is an enormous step of progress, an enormous vote of confidence in AMC's future. Part of the, part of the deal would be uh, I guess, to, to retire some of the debt through through equity. And the stock initially went up on it. So that uh, other times in the past where you've had to do that, uh, Adam, the stock uh, has gone down. So there, there was a real concern uh, in the marketplace about the viability long term of AMC, you would say, with, the, with, with debt maturities that were in 25 or 26. So this takes that off the table. You're going to be around and be there for the uh, the recovery in in the the motion picture industry after the strike. Joe, you just said it perfectly. The press has been filled the last several months with anxiety that AMC might not be able to fund the two point six billion dollars that was owed in April of 2026, and there was lots of loose talk about uh, in the press, not by us, about uh, the risk of bankruptcy. I mean, I've been quoted over and over again saying I thought that was inconceivable and that we would be taking steps to assure AMC's future. And that's what we did yesterday. Uh, I would remind everybody, January of 2029 and April of 2030, uh, our next very large maturity dates are years and years away from now. Uh, and as I said, it's coming to a time when the box office is finally roaring back. Uh, our profitability will rise if, as, and when the box office rises. This is all just such a good news story for my company and for our shareholders. What did you have to give up uh, to, to get the debt structure? Did, did you uh, put some of the, the physical properties in? Uh, I don't know, is there a lien on, on those? Adam, how did, how did you get the lenders to agree? Well, um, I, I think one of the ways we got them to agree was to show them how well we've been running the company since COVID hit in March of 2020. You know, our company raised over $3 billion of equity underneath the debt in the capital structure to buttress and strengthen the company without asking our, our lenders for any concessions at all. Uh, and they rewarded us for that. There's a whole series of uh, collateral changes between one debt instrument and another. Uh, some interest rates went up, some interest rates went down because we uh, took some of our second lien debt and turned it into a convertible debt issuance instead. The, the deal is very complicated, and I would encourage any investor who wants to know more to go to our SEC filings, where it's laid out in excruciating detail. But you know, the reality is we didn't give up much of anything. We just convinced our lenders that this company has been run well, this company has the support of consumers, the box office is finally growing again, and we should be there to take advantage of that. They agreed with us, uh, and we have all the time in the world to get there now. 
You gonna produce any more movies? I mean, is that a new model? I, I, and how did that, the the Ayers tour, the most successful concert film ever, did, did that give you a little bit of a bridge uh, in terms of, of uh, incremental revenue? Yes, yes, and yes, Joe Kernan. And I'm gonna share something with your audience that they may not know. Um, yes, the Taylor Swift the Ayers tour is the most highest grossing concert film in history, is the highest grossing documentary in history. Guess who AMC owes uh, Taylor Swift the Euros Tour movie to? Obviously to Taylor Swift, but also to Joe Kernan. Because I got a call from you saying, you know, you really ought to turn the Euros Tour concert into a movie, and I can introduce you to Taylor and her camp. And I took you up on that invitation. So I give you full credit. And not only did we produced the Taylor Swift Euros Tour movie, which was the first movie that AMC has ever distributed in over a century. But right behind that was a Beyonce movie. Uh, beyond that, we did a listening event for Billie Eilish's album release in May. We have more concert film announcements coming, some in the very near future. Uh, and we're very excited. This is a new line of business for AMC. And I guess we owe it all to you for the idea, and but especially to Taylor and Beyonce and Billy and the world-class artists who are going to be next in line. It was a strange con confluence of events. Uh, I, I'd known uh, Taylor's dad for a long time, and they had been speaking to the studios and not hearing what they wanted to hear. And it occurred to me, would it even be possible after that law to go directly to a district? I go, Scott, have you heard of, of AMC and he goes, AMC, what is AMC? America, you know, and I, he, I said, do you know the theater? He said, I know the Bijou Theater in my hometown. I go, well, AMC is the biggest theater chain. What about going directly to them? And then, as you know, I called you. He, he said, yeah, I'll talk about it. I called you, you called him, and I was shocked three months later that, uh, but the check's in the mail, is that, is that it? How much did you make? And they, oh, I don't, that, that, that won't work. All I get is your gratitude and Scott's gratitude, I guess. Uh, a big thank you in front of all your viewers, how's that? <laughs> but yes, this movie grossed $271 million. Oh uh, and it was the beginning of a whole new line of business for AMC because Beyonce's movie was big. There are more concert films coming. Uh, these are, you know, if you think about all the challenges that have been thrown at AMC since COVID, there, I don't think there's a company in, that I can remember that's had to deal with all of the trauma and difficulty and industry pain. And remember, with the exception of these concert movies, we don't make movies, we just show them. Uh, and we rely on the major studios for most of our content. And it's been a tough four years, a very tough four years. But fortunately for us, uh, retail shareholders embraced AMC, they invested in AMC, they threw their love, their heart, and their passion in AMC. Obviously, they were happier when the share price was going up than when the share price was going down. But, you know, in the past two months, AMC share price is up 81% in two months. And, and I think that the fact that the box office is coming back and that yesterday we were able to announce almost a five-year runway before our major debt maturities are due, these, these are just enormously positive steps forward for AMC. And I'm happy to talk about them here with you today. Well, yeah, that is uh, 25 and 26 is right around the corner. We know that now, uh, Adam, as we get a little bit older, and, and that definitely gives you uh, the breathing room necessary. And we've talked about it a lot. I don't, I, I, I can't imagine a world where you don't have a, a big opening for a, a blockbuster movie you, that's just never going to be on, on your TV screen at home, hopefully. Hopefully there will always be, uh, you know, that great, um, artificial buttered popcorn to watch a big movie with. Uh, I don't want to I don't want to live in a world they're, without they're, AMC. They're, they're coming and they're coming right now, Joe. Um, they are. Uh, yeah. This coming Friday, Deadpool and Wolverine opens. We think it has a chance of being the highest grossing R-rated film in history. Uh, just this fall, uh, there's another Joker. Uh, Universal has Wicked coming out. The, a great movie of the broad, great uh, Broadway musical. Alien is coming, an Alien sequel is coming out in August. Uh, uh, Disney's got Moana. There's a Mufasa Lion King movie coming out at Christmas. And as you go into 25 and 26, I mean, it's just staggering. There's going to be another Avengers movie. There's going to be another Star Wars movie. There's going to be another Avatar, Avatar movie. Yep. Uh, 
there, you know, it's just one after another after another. Mission Impossible Eight. Uh, there are so many good movies coming out, uh, and uh, that's why we're so optimistic about AMC's future. So bullish about AMC's future. Look, it's been a very, very tough four years, uh, but I think we've navigated turbulent waters about as skillfully as they could be navigated. Right. Our shareholders have stayed with us. Our millions of retail investors, our lenders proved just yesterday they've stayed with us. And finally, I think the good times are about to roll. Great. Adam, thank you for, uh, for bringing that uh, to us and, and for bringing it on, on CNBC exclusively, exclusively. So, appreciate it. Thanks. All right, it's been a while since I posted a video on AMC because there hasn't been much to talk about for a while. With that being said, I know a lot of you have subscribed to the channel more recently and you have never heard me talk about AMC. So let me briefly share with you what I think about AMC. I want every single legitimate company who has been wrongfully targeted by malicious short sellers and large firms on Wall Street to survive. Don't misunderstand me here. If someone went short on a stock and someone else went long on that same stock and we all played by the same rules, that would be one thing. But that is not at all what we have seen with stocks like AMC, GameStop, and others. You may not like some of these companies, you may not own any of these companies' stocks, and that is completely fine. I don't want you to miss this, though. The problems that these stocks have brought to light go far beyond just these stocks. The problems these stocks have brought to light affect thousands of stocks, thousands of companies, millions of employees, and millions of shareholders. The problems that plague stocks like GameStop, AMC, and others also plague the rest of the financial markets in varying degrees. When it comes to AMC, there have been times in the past when I've agreed with management, and there have also been times in the past when I disagree with management. Ultimately, though, I want every single legitimate company to survive and make it for the sake of their many employees, customers, and shareholders. With that being said, it is encouraging to see that bankruptcy has been staved off from AMC for now. It is completely off the table for a while now. AMC's entire business was completely shut during the pandemic in 2020, then we had the writers and actors strikes that resulted in a drought of content. And both of these events caused short sellers to absolutely pounce on AMC. And now finally, finally the box office is coming back with plenty of new content for viewers. AMC is not out of the woods yet. There's still a ways to go. But, at least for now, there appears to be a way forward. Please understand me here. I'm not telling you to buy sell, or hold anything, I don't do that. What I am saying is that this is a company that has been wrongfully targeted by malicious short sellers on Wall Street, abused via naked short selling and rehypothecation in the securities lending market, experienced many trading days in which the vast, vast majority of individual investors' order flow was routed off exchange to non-transparent dark pools rather than lit transparent exchanges, and the list of problems just keeps on going. As for AMC, GameStop, and any other legitimate company that has been wrongfully targeted by Wall Street. I want these companies to survive, and I want real, meaningful change in the financial markets. What individual investors want is simple, and nothing we're advocating for is beyond the realm of reason. Individual investors want a free, fair, and transparent stock market. We want large institutions to be held accountable for their actions. We want individual investors to have access to the same real-time data from exchanges better private feeds which is currently only available to the large firms on Wall Street. We want short sale data to be reported in real time. We want an end to excessive amounts of failures to deliver, and we want entities who fail to deliver on their obligations to be held accountable. We want an end to payment for order flow due to the insane conflicts of interest it creates. There's a reason why so many other countries have already banned it. We want the exchanges to be not-for-profit utilities as they once were. The exchanges becoming for-profit ventures has created so many conflicts of interest at the expense of individual investors. We want increased competition among market makers. And we want all of individual investors' orders to be routed directly to lit transparent exchanges rather than opaque alternative trading systems known as dark pools. Ultimately, it's simple. What we want is a stock market that offers a truly level playing field for all investors. Please leave a like on this video so more people will see it. And while you're down there, please consider subscribing. It's free, and you can always change your mind. Thanks for watching, and hopefully, I'll see you in the next video.